Most home landscape and garden irrigation systems are going to require multiple zones. This can be due to different plants with differing water requirements, different levels of the sunlight exposure, or simply to be able to keep up with the flow rate provided by the water source. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a manifold so you can quickly and easily zone your DIY irrigation system. It can be anywhere from one to many zones, however many you need, though you want to keep in mind how many can fit in a valve box at a time. Now, one of the nice things about this is the more zones you have, you just get one more of each part. This is two zones, but if we had three, we just get one more of everything except the cap. You notice there's different kinds of parts for different types of manifolds. What parts you use is largely guided by what your connection type is on your valve, particularly at the inlet. Threaded valves are probably the most common. That's because they're very easy to install. You simply screw the manifold fitting into it. Slip or glue connections are among the most economical. And this is because it's pretty inexpensive to get just a piece of PVC pipe or PVC fitting and apply your purple primer and solvent and glue them together. Though the most economical, the slip or solvent connection is probably the most difficult because it requires extra steps and outside chemicals. The bite or push fit fitting is the most expensive, but it's also probably the fastest and easiest to install. All you have to do is align the inlet of the valve with the teeth on the fitting, push them together and you're done. And if you're building a blue lock system, well, you'll have to have the bite or push fit fittings that go with them. We have all the links for these parts, including the valves, in the description below. Now, there's a reason some of these parts are used in manifolds. This part, for example, has a swivel. Now, if you've ever done maintenance or needed to access valves in a valve box, you know that a swivel is invaluable. The swivel allows you to turn and remove parts without having to turn the entire assembly. This goes on the outlet of the valve. Now, this part here is what's known as a manifold nipple. The manifold nipple has an O-ring here. This means you don't need to use Teflon tape or pipe dope to get a good seal. It's the O-ring that provides the seal. And you'll see quite a few of these parts have that. It'll save you a little bit of time and cost of materials. You'll notice that you can mix and match manifold pieces to some degree, but really you're primarily concerned with three connections, your water source, your valve inlet, and your valve outlet. I recommend only mixing matching insofar as providing convenience. For example, getting over to a swivel fitting so you can easily access it for maintenance. In regards to the outlet, you just want to make sure it gets over to whatever distribution line you're going to use. For example, PVC lock or blue lock is going to use PVC pipe or blue lock tubing. Drip lock is going to use half inch poly tubing, whereas a threaded valve outlet can go to pretty much any type. And a quick tip, if you'd like to save a little bit of time, some manifolds come already pre-assembled. You notice this two outlet manifold is already together, even though it's essentially the same thing as two of the manifold tees that are threaded together. The benefits to this is it's one less point of failure. One less threaded connection is one less possible failure. And if you expand in the future and need four valves, you can just thread these two together and done it in half the time as threading together multiple tees. Now, let's go step by step through the assembly of our most common manifold. And remember, keep in mind, if you need more zones, you just need one more of each part, except the cap. We're gonna start with our two manifold T's. These are what go on the endless side. Now remember, if you want a third zone, all you'd have to do is connect the third T. Since we're only gonna build two zones, we'll have two T's and then we'll cap it off. Now we'll put our manifold nipples into our valve. This way we can use the swivel on the T's to connect the T's to the valves themselves. Check your valves to see if they have any arrows that indicate the direction of flow and make sure water is flowing in that direction. Now we're ready to connect our valves to the inlet tees. To do so, I'm just gonna use the swivel. Now I don't have to turn the entire valve itself, which would be very difficult to do, particularly on the second zone. Now I'll connect the outlet adapter to the valve. And now our threads by slip adapter. Now the slip side is where we connect our actual PVC pipe when we're ready. Now. It might look like we're using extra adapters that we don't need. For example, you could go straight to this white PVC piece and connect your PVC pipe. However, we recommend the gray PVC manifold parts mostly because of the swivel. The swivel allows you to access it for easy maintenance. Without that swivel, you'll probably have to cut your way into your manifold anytime you want to provide maintenance to it. And there we are. Our two zone manifold is ready to go in the ground. Now, if you'd like to save a little bit of time and make the job a little bit easier, Instead of the threads by slip fitting we used that requires primer and solvent, you could use this threads by PVC lock adapter. This can thread right into the end of the valve, or you can thread it into the swivel so that you still have the convenience of being able to easily remove things for access or maintenance. For first time DIYers, I typically recommend PVC lock. This is because with PVC lock, you won't have to get outside chemicals and it will save a lot of time. A lot of the learning curve is applying primer, solvent, and connecting it in time. And PVC lock removes all of that. 
If your DIY irrigation system is going to have a centrally located manifold and valves, you now know what options are available to you and some of the pros, cons, and advantages of each one, and how easy they are to assemble. Today, we talked about PVC fittings and PVC lock fittings. PVC lock fittings you may not have heard of. If you'd like to learn the difference between the two and what we recommend and why, check out our video right here.